Chinese propaganda is a lot more successful than most people realize. They've gotten clever at tapping into people's distrust of Western mainstream media with pro-CCP narratives. If only more people watch China Uncensored instead. Welcome to China Uncensored, I'm Chris Chappell. I have good news and some bad news. The good news is that more and more people are waking up to just how insanely incompetent and dangerous the Chinese Communist Party is. A lot of it is thanks to the CCP's own actions. It's so in your face that you can almost smell the honey from Xi Jinping's breath. As a result, a recent global survey reports historically high negative views of China. But here's the bad news. China is still tremendously influential all over the world. The Pew Research Center found that middle-income countries like Indonesia, Kenya, Nigeria, Argentina, and Mexico tend to hold more favorable views of China. And even in countries like America, there are still a lot of people with a flowery picture of China. That's because of the CCP's powerful propaganda machine. According to The Economist, Xi Jinping gives his propagandists seven to ten billion dollars per year to tell China's story well. And it's surprisingly effective. Earlier this year, political scientists at Harvard, Yale, and the University of Groningen studied the effectiveness of pro-Chinese media versus pro-American media. They found that Chinese state media persuades a global audience that the China model provides growth, stability, and competent leadership and is superior to American democracy. American media, meanwhile, wasn't nearly as effective. In fact, even Americans are susceptible to Chinese media influence. In one survey pool, only 16% of respondents prefer the Chinese political model over the American model. However, after viewing Chinese media, the proportion preferring the Chinese political model more than triples to 54%. So how does Chinese propaganda succeed in influencing people? The thing you gotta understand is that China doesn't just use state-run media. Influencers are major tools for propaganda as well. For those of you who haven't watched through hours of their nonsense, I envy you. Now I've talked before about pro-China influencers peddling false narratives and how many collaborate with Chinese government agents. Here's one influencer with no fewer than three Chinese agents watching his every move. Free journalism at its finest. In the past, I haven't shown the videos or names of pro-China influencers because I didn't want to give more publicity to people who are willing to defend a genocidal regime. But given that people are still sharing their videos and taking their word at face value, I say screw it. It's time that I show you how to detect and dissect CCP propaganda. First, let's start off by pointing out how pro-China propagandists outright lie. For example, they talk about China's glorious democracy, where the people are heard and are represented. I can tell you with my hand on my Chinese heart that in seven years living in China, I have seen a great way of life, that mostly people are contented, mostly people are happy. They have a, a mechanism to speak, they are heard, and there, there is a governing system that is by and for the people. Let's just ignore the way the people who engage in public dissent tend to quietly disappear for weeks at a time. Pro-China influencers also praise China's response to the pandemic. Well, I think China's done a good job. I mean, they, they, they were able to uh, successfully navigate through the pandemic, um, obviously. When actually, the CCP botched the pandemic with an untold number of dead and scrubbed data that could have revealed the actual death toll. But pro-China propagandists have other creative ways to spread their message besides outright lies. Let's start with number one, emphasizing massive growth and big numbers. The CCP needs to look competent, like it's doing something productive for China's people. For the party, the golden goose is infrastructure development. Pro-China voices love pointing out large numbers, such as the increased distance of roads and number of deliveries. Media coverage like this is especially attractive to Latin American and African countries, which tend to view China as a model of a rising, developing nation. With the consolidation and improvement of rural drinking water safety projects, China has guaranteed the safety of drinking water for nearly 29 million impoverished residents and ensured an adequate supply of quality drinking water for 382 million rural residents. This was a scene from 10 years ago when migrant workers returned home on motorcycles for a spring festival in Guangxi in southern China. 
That's a thing of the past now, with the launch of these new railway lines into hard to reach places. Bringing up infrastructure is the go-to YouTube video idea for pro-China influencers, like living in China. Playing a drinking game where you take a shot each time he talks about what China built is a fast track to alcohol poisoning. Western academics and politicians fall for this type of hype as well. And sure, it sounds good on the surface, the problem is pro-Chinese voices ignore how Chinese infrastructure projects all over the world are falling apart thanks to shoddy tofu construction, which even Chinese leaders admit is a problem. Pro-Chinese propagandists also ignore how China overbuilds useless buildings like this ghost city, and roads to nowhere just to pad the numbers, all while piling up debt fueled by China's shadow banks. Just having more stuff built doesn't necessarily equate to economic success. That's something pro-China propagandists tend to ignore. In fact, omitting inconvenient facts is a very common tactic pro-China propagandists use. And that's not all. I'll tell you more pro-China propaganda tricks after the break. Welcome back. So pro-China propagandists know what resonates with people, which leads us to another one of their tricks. Number two, tapping into distrust of Western media. Anytime people refer to Western sources on China-related information, pro-Chinese propagandists say that Western media is just stirring anti-China lies and bias. Everything that makes China look bad is simply dismissed as negative narrative peddling. Why is it that Western media loves to paint China as the bad guys, and every time there's a new piece of news to do with China, it's always negative and it's always misinformation? Now, I'm also a firm critic of Western mainstream media. I do that often, especially on my other channel, America Uncovered. Check it out if you haven't. But in many ways, Western mainstream media has itself to blame for pushing narratives rather than focusing on just presenting facts with proper context. But consider this. Western media actually has a track record of not wanting to stir up too much trouble with China, like what Bloomberg News did regarding Chinese corruption. Western media sources are frequently more inclined to call for Chinese engagement. They also get paid for putting actual Chinese propaganda in their papers and publish pro-Chinese op-eds written by Chinese officials. So when propagandists claim that Western media is entirely biased against China, well, it's just not that simple. The fact that Western media bring up things like China's genocide and military aggression actually just goes to show that these things can't be ignored, especially when there are tons of photo and video evidence, testimonies, and clues from China's own data. What's perhaps the scariest and most dangerous thing pro-China propagandists do, though, is number three, mixing truths with lies. It's such a Marxist thing for pro-China propagandists to do, which isn't a surprise since they're defending the Chinese Communist Party. And they're quite clever at it. Pro-China propagandists make things hard to dispute by using actual facts to draw conclusions that clearly don't match reality. For example, Chinese state-run media tries to spin the fact that China's demolishing mosques in Xinjiang as public safety. It's all about perspectives. Yep, it's just about perspective. The CCP isn't trying to erase the Uyghur identity, they're just interested in Uyghur safety. We'll just conveniently ignore the perspective of the Uyghurs protesting demolitions. Or conflicting statements from Chinese officials, like this one, where the head of a committee said the demolitions were to protect the safety of worshippers because the mosques were too old, and then that there were more than enough mosques and some were unnecessary. Of course, when it comes to perspectives, pro-China propagandists come up with all sorts of ways to make China the victim, and blame the U.S. for escalating tensions. But how do pro-China propagandists respond to CCP policies that screw over a ton of people, like zero COVID? Well, they get creative by making one unfortunate truth into a positive. The chaotic ground-level experience of the lockdown should have never been so sloppy. And guess what, everyone? The Chinese government is the one to blame for all these things. And you know what else? The COVID death rate just goes down and down. They are the ones responsible. 
And that's why we owe them an enormous amount of gratitude. And though the rest of us may suffer a bit in the short term and won't have our favorite blueberries, we should enjoy our lazy role in witnessing one of the most heroic events in human history. That's right, folks. The Chinese government absolutely botched their COVID response, and that's a good thing. I wouldn't give the Chinese government that much credit for saving lives, especially when pro-China propagandists do this one other thing. I'll tell you what that is after this final commercial break. Welcome back. We've seen three strategies pro-China propagandists use to promote China. And here's another one. Number four, putting out authoritative lies. When there are multiple authoritative sources saying different things, what people should be doing is examining all talking points and piecing together the most consistent facts. Unfortunately, most people don't operate like that. I mean, who has the time, right? China takes advantage of this by churning out false information that seems legit, knowing full well that people will take what it says at face value. This includes things like China's GDP numbers, which a top leader says are man-made and COVID infections and deaths, which leaked notes show are far above official reports. Whatever China doesn't make up, it just stops reporting, such as the number of COVID infections and unemployment rates. Pro-China propagandists definitely won't report on all that. Instead, they'll take information from the Chinese government and other authoritative organizations at face value. The things propagandists say are obviously very biased for China, but they fully embrace the bias, presenting it as a way to promote balance in the news. Ever since I started my Reports on China show, I've had people accuse me of being unbalanced and only talking positively of China. That's actually completely true, and I'll tell you why. Instead, my role is to correct Western media when they get it wrong. Many, many Western reports are completely and utterly unbalanced and unfair leading to an extremely anti-China bias. But if you zoom out and look at the entire media landscape, my reports are merely a drop in the ocean when it comes to attempting to bring some balance back to English language China reporting. But what is the conclusion that these people want you to believe? Aside from wanting to make people believe that everything is America's fault, that China is standing up for itself, and that China wants to help people thrive, the end goal is submission to the CCP, and pro-China propagandists are open about it. The only way to successfully change China is from within China. You must climb the political ranks and make your changes popular with the people and the party. That's how this country works. My parents are typical Chinese parents who just want their kids to have a, a good job and a good life. They think like a good, li good job equals to good life. I see a Chinese parent's mindset in the government, too. Um, the region has put in a lot of efforts to uh, attracting uh, companies to invest in the region and create more jobs. What pro-China propagandists ultimately want to do is either make people complacent believers in the communist cause, or at the very least, confused enough to stop caring about figuring out the truth. But with your support, China Uncensored can continue to counter the growing success of Chinese propaganda. So head over to patreon.com slash China Uncensored. All it takes is as little as a dollar an episode to fight the CCP and their army of propagandists. You also get to ask me questions that I'll answer on the show. Today's question comes from David Michael White. Chris, do you believe that using propaganda against the CCP is more or less effective? First of all, David, great profile picture. And an important question. So as I mentioned earlier, the American propaganda seems to be less effective than what China is doing. To be fair, the CCP are masters of propaganda. But there is something the U.S. can do. Retired U.S. Marine Colonel Grant Newsham, whom I've had on the show, wrote this fascinating piece called The Way to Take on China is to Make it Personal. Basically, U.S. media outlets and journalists need to make a push to point out corruption at the top levels of the Chinese Communist Party. The individual and unexplainable wealth of Politburo members and other top CCP officials is perhaps the CCP's greatest vulnerability. Chinese people are struggling. Poverty is widespread and the economy is tanking. It's one thing to blame China's problems on foreigners treating the PRC unfairly, but explaining away a CCP boss's $20 million condo in New York City, the three relatives with U.S. green cards, and the six businesses, even if they are in relatives' names, is a very different thing. 
We have a full episode about these kinds of tactics the U.S. could be using, which you can see here. David, thank you for all of your support. And if you want to join the China Uncensored 50 Cent Army, click that orange button. Once again, I'm Chris Chappell. See you next time.